It's been decades since subtractive manufacturing was the only method for making parts. Today, additive manufacturing is entering maturity and pushing into realms once considered science fiction, building complex items layer by layer and enhancing both design possibilities and efficiency. Let's take a look back and forward. Around 1860, French inventor Francois William develops the photo sculpture technique. The method uses multiple photographic images of a subject from different angles to create a three-dimensional representation. It's an early case study for the idea of building up a physical object through layering. A century later, the theoretical foundation for 3D printing begins taking shape with advancements in computer-aided design and graphics. Ivan Sutherland develops Sketchpad, revolutionizing the way engineers and designers work. CAD software delivers the precision and flexibility for the creation of intricate and customized designs that can be accurately 3D printed. In 1971, Johannes F. Gottwald patents a device for printing metal objects using inkjet technology. The liquid metal recorder is never produced, but it's the first known patent describing 3D printing and rapid prototyping. In 1981, Hideo Kodama develops the first practical implementation of a rapid prototyping system. The method, engineered at the Nagoya Municipal Industrial Research Institute, involves curing layers of photopolymer resin with ultraviolet light. Three-dimensional objects are created layer by layer from a digital model. The project doesn't result in a commercial product, but it establishes the essential principles of additive manufacturing. We're developing a new technology for designers who use CAD CAM computers. This is so that the designer can directly make a prototype from the image that he has on the screen of his terminal. We call this technology stereolithography. In 1984, Charles Hall invents stereolithography, a method that uses a computer-controlled ultraviolet laser to precisely cure and solidify layers of photopolymer resin. The technique unlocks the ability to create highly detailed and complex shapes that would be difficult or impossible to achieve with traditional manufacturing methods. Poco founds 3D Systems Corporation in 1986 to commercialize the technology. 3D Systems pioneers the market, producing the first commercial 3D printer, the SL01, in 1987. Poco also introduces the STL file format, which becomes a standard for 3D printing. Doctors at the UCLA Medical Center are thinking about using stereolithography for cosmetic surgery. For example, if this were my skull, I could ask the computer to redesign my jawbone, my cheekbones, my nose, my brow, whatever, and then at the push of a button, I could stand by and look at the new me rising above the liquid polymer. In the 1990s, Z Corporation licenses 3DP technology developed at MIT. The technique lets 3D printers build objects by spraying a liquid binder onto layers of powder. It leads to a new class of 3D printers that can create objects from a variety of materials, including ceramics, metals, and composites. In the Y2K era, scientists at the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine use 3D printing to create the first synthetic scaffold of a human bladder and a miniature human kidney. It paves the way for bioprinting, demonstrating the potential for using 3D technology to create personalized organs and tissues. A patient's own cells are used to construct a kidney prototype layer by layer, mimicking the organ's complex structure. The groundbreaking achievement jumpstarts development of medical applications, especially in the fields of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine. In the 2000s, Adrian Boyer develops the RepRap Replicating Rapid Prototyper. It's a 3D printer that can self-replicate. The first successful RepRap machine, named Darwin, is completed in 2008. It can replicate about half of its own parts, while subsequent revisions such as Mendel and Prusa refined the technology. The project's open-source nature, coupled with the ability to print new parts for other printers, attracts an eclectic community of users and developers. In the early 2010s, a team from the University of Southampton develops the world's first 3D-printed unmanned aerial vehicle. 
The Southampton University laser-centered aircraft is created using a process called selective laser sintering. A laser fuses powdered materials layer by layer to form solid structures. With a 1.5-meter wingspan, the aircraft is made entirely from nylon aside from its electronic components. Its wingspan can be assembled without any fasteners or adhesives. The simplicity of the construction allows for rapid prototyping and production, significantly reducing the time and cost associated with traditional aircraft manufacturing practices. The biotech company Organovo successfully 3D prints functional human liver tissue, demonstrating the potential of printing transplantable organs. Well, this injector is a LOX hydrogen, liquid oxygen hydrogen injector built by the direct metal laser sintering. In 2013, NASA successfully tests a 3D printed rocket engine injector. It showcases the potential for additive manufacturing and space exploration. One of the advantages that uh, the additive manufacturing allows is that it allows designers to uh, incorporate complex internal flow geometry into the injectors that uh, they would not be able to do with conventional machines. The FDA approves the first 3D printed drug, Spritum by Apricia Pharmaceuticals, in 2014 for treating epilepsy. In 2015, the first 3D printed office building is completed in Dubai. Led by the Dubai Future Foundation, the building known as the Office of the Future is printed using a large-scale 3D printer and special concrete mixtures. The entire structure is printed in layers and assembled on site within 17 days. By 2017, G Aviation starts mass producing 3D printed fuel nozzles for its Leap jet engine. Now Lab introduces the first 3D printed motorcycle, Nera, in 2018, pushing the boundaries for what's possible with additive manufacturing in the automotive industry. The following year, the construction tech company Icon successfully 3D prints a community of homes in Mexico for low-income families. During the COVID-19 pandemic, additive manufacturing plays a major role in addressing supply chain disruptions and urgent medical needs. The technology enables organizations to pivot rapidly to produce medical supplies like face masks and ventilator components. After significant maturation, additive manufacturing becomes an increasingly key component of the fourth industrial revolution. It's used widely across industries for producing complex, customized parts efficiently and cost-effectively. Meticulous research predicts a compound annual growth rate of 22% into 2030. As 3D printing integrates with Industry 4.0 technologies like digital twins, IoT, and generative AI, the future increasingly resembles a science fiction movie. Let's take a peek. As the 2030s progress, there's less and less that additive manufacturing can't do. Additive methods become increasingly competitive with traditional manufacturing practices. Not only are 3D printers much faster, they can also do a lot more. They can create complex, multifunctional parts in a single print cycle. The most advanced technology can even include embedded components and sensors directly into printed objects. Fully functional devices are possible straight off the printer. Advances in bioprinting enable the production of functional, transplantable human organs. Smart materials that can self-repair when damaged become more common, extending the life of printed parts. Shape memory alloys shift form in response to environmental stimuli. Toward the end of the decade, additive manufacturing plays a crucial role in space construction initiatives. They're deployed to build structures and habitats on the Moon and Mars using locally sourced materials. Back on Earth, advanced 3D printers become status symbols. The most expensive ones print high-quality items like clothing, furniture, and personalized healthcare devices. By the 2040s, additive manufacturing supports a wide range of materials including advanced composites, high-performance alloys, and functionally graded materials. This allows for the creation of parts with enhanced mechanical properties and thermal resistance. Advanced printers seamlessly integrate multiple materials within a single print, opening worlds for components with embedded sensors, electronics, and multifunctions. Large-scale printing is normalized thanks to advancements in robotics and autonomous printing systems. Real-time monitoring ensures the integrity of parts during the printing process. 
in situ repair capabilities allow for the maintenance of critical components in the field. In space, additive manufacturing enables the on-demand production of spare parts and tools aboard spacecraft and space stations, reducing the need for large inventories. The production of satellites and probes directly in space becomes feasible. Large-scale additive manufacturing facilitates space-based solar power stations that capture energy for missions and for Earth. Most profoundly, plans for space colonization begin to materialize thanks to Possibilities 3D printing unlocks. As the decade closes, the world is captivated as an international coalition readies the first space colony for civilians. In the 2050s, the first group of humans leaves Earth to colonize Mars. The one-way trip is decades in the making. The crew of 25 are chosen for their diverse skills and must pass rigorous tests in physical fitness, resilience, and problem-solving. The group includes scientists, engineers, doctors, and technicians, all with extensive additive manufacturing training. The Ares Ascendant is built with lightweight, durable components made from advanced, smart materials. These materials optimize the craft for the six-month voyage. Complex printed parts are used for structural elements, internal fixtures, and propulsion systems. During the journey, onboard printers produce spare parts and tools as needed, allowing for prompt repair. Once on Mars, they use local resources like regolith to build more living spaces, labs, and storage, enabling sustainable growth. They work alongside AI robots, autonomous drones, and self-replicating printers maintaining complex life support systems. They build infrastructure for the next wave of colonizers who are expected to start families. This includes printing nursery furniture, toys, clothing, and educational items. Inevitably, there's a love match in the group. One thing leads to another, and nine months later, the world celebrates as the first confirmed Martian is born.